नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू स्टडी आई क्यू आई एम योर फ्रेंड राहुल साईगांवकर द एजेंडा ऑफ टूडेज डिस्कशन इज कनेक्टेड टू एनवायरमेंट वेयर वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कन्वेंशन कनेक्टेड विद एनवायरमेंटल प्रोटेक्शन आर डिस्कशन टूडे इज कनेक्टेड टू मिनामाटा कन्वेंशन आई एम क्वाइट श्योर मेनी ऑफ यू आर अवेयर ऑफ मिनामाटा कन्वेंशन विच इज कनेक्टेड विथ एंडिंग मर्क्यूरी पॉइजनिंग Why are we discussing about this convention? Because recently the conference of parties for Minamata Convention concluded, and some landmark decisions have been taken by the parties to the convention. We are going to understand what are these decisions. But before that, we are going to discuss in general about what is Minamata Convention, why the name Minamata, and we are going to get information about the Minamata disaster of 1950s. at the end of the discussion we'll of course talk about what were the decisions taken by the conference of parties during this cop that is going to be the agenda for today's discussion to get to know all this information stay with me till the very end all right let's begin but before that a very important and a very big information for all the upsc civil services aspirants study iq p2 i program batch 3 is about to begin the english batch is beginning from 17th november 2023 where i'll be starting the classes for you the english and the hindi batches are also starting on different dates please remember there is a big big diwali sale which has begun on study iq just use the code rahul life to get maximum discount during this diwali sale for any program you can enroll using the code a lot of discounts are available and the discounts are only available till 16th of november do it before that enroll now i'll see you in the class all right let us begin our discussion about minamata convention the first thing what is this minamata convention a convention basically is an agreement or a meeting between the parties or or the nations who have joined for some particular agenda now we know about the unfccc united nations framework convention on climate change we know about the biodiversity convention we know about the the combating uh, desertification convention which all came in 1992 now this minamata convention it brought parties together to end or to counter mercury poisoning it is a convention or an agreement which intends to protect public health and environment from the effects of mercury based pollution now you are thinking sir mercury based pollution this sounds very dangerous because mercury is something that we use in many equipments for instance every day when you check your temperature there is mercury when you check your blood pressure in the spigmo manometer there is mercury in the compact fluorescent lights there is mercury there is mercury in batteries so is it a real danger we'll get all this information in this video first of all the minamata convention it came in 2013 it was adopted however it came into force four years later later in 2017 after the requisite ratifications please remember india is a signatory to to the minamata convention india has signed the convention india has also ratified the minamata convention in 2018 itself it was signed in kumamoto kumamoto is a city in fact kumamoto is a prefecture in japan prefecture is very similar to a state like the, the state what we call there is karnataka maharashtra etc very similar to those states there are prefectures in japan and kumamoto comes in the island of kyushu in fact do one thing research a little and let me know in the comment section the japanese islands the five main japanese islands from north to south let's prepare some geography as well while we are discussing this environmental topic all right please remember the minamata convention was signed in kumamoto but its headquarter is not in kumamoto or minamata the headquarters is in geneva switzerland very important pointer from mcq now you are thinking so why the name minamata you are telling the headquarters is in geneva switzerland you are telling it was signed in kumamoto city kumamoto city in the kumamoto prefecture itself then why the name minamata now minamata is a name of a city a coastal city in the kumamoto prefecture itself and there is a, a very uh, a very sad history connected to the city especially to the to the bay minamata bay the naming is of symbolic importance because the city minamata city it went through a devastating incident of mercury poisoning during 1950s 60s 70s now that is why 
the name Minamata. Let's first understand about Minamata disaster and then we'll talk about we'll talk about the convention or the COP, the conference of parties. Now, as I told you, the incident occurred in Minamata. What kind of disease is this Minamata disease? Is it, it is a disease connected to mercury poisoning. There was a company in Minamata called as Chiso Limited. It used to produce chemicals. It used to produce acetaldehyde. Initially, during the Meiji Restoration, the company came in 1900s only. Initially, they used to make rail lines, etc. But slowly, they entered into different businesses and they started chemical production as well. In 1940s and 50s, they started producing acetaldehyde. And while producing acetaldehyde, they used mercury. And one of the byproducts, methyl mercury, it was dumped in the waters. It was dumped in the Bay Area of Minamata. And this methyl mercury, of course, you do understand humans, we are very smart people, isn't it? We are very dangerous people as well. So, we do not consume mercury directly because we know it is dangerous. But what about the animals? What about the marine organism? The methyl mercury, it entered waters and it entered into the food chain through fish and shellfishes, fishes, normal fishes and shellfishes through the gills itself. They also did not consume it. It came through gills. It came through water inside the body. And when these fishes were caught and they were consumed by humans, it entered the food chain, basically in the human food chain as well. So, the problem started. So, Minamata disease, it started because of consumption of large quantities of fishes and shellfishes which had, which were actually, or which had got gotten polluted because of methyl mercury. Please remember, methyl mercury is very dangerous, whereas ethyl mercury, ethyl mercury is, is not comparatively that dangerous. So, methyl mercury, it entered very quickly into the food chain. So, what happened? What happened? The problem started. Methyl mercury and mercury based poisoning, it started impacting the central nervous system of people in the Minamata Bay area. Please remember the disease itself, the Minamata disease, the name itself is Minamata disease, mercury poisoning disease called Minamata disease. It's not contagious. If it occurs to one person, it cannot spread to another person because it is connected to mercury poisoning. It is not even genetic. Remember, it is not contagious. It is not genetic, genetically transmitted. Now, this started in 1950s. Throughout 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, thousands of patients started to reach hospitals complaining about symptoms. The symptoms of this Minamata disease, it included, firstly, it attacks the central nervous system. It attacks the brain and the central nervous system. Initially, numbness, unsteadiness can be seen, unsteadiness in the legs and in the hands, quickly tiredness, ringing is heard in the ears. There is also loss of vision, loss of field vision, loss of hearing, slurred speech and awkward movement. In severe cases of Minamata disease, people became unconscious and they they died it is it is quite fatal people after in getting infected by this minamata disease they died within a month so thousands of patients reached hospital and the the japanese administration it attributed the cause of this disease to the discharge by chiso company limited as i told you chiso company limited so slowly and steadily the compensation work started, the reversing of mercury poisoning started and uh, if you look at mercury itself, you must be thinking, sir, we use mercury in so many places. See, inorganic mercury is very fine because you do not consume it. Ensure that inorganic mercury that you use in your, in your thermometers, in your spigmomanometers, in your batteries, etc., it has to be disposed of properly. It has to be recycled. It has to be disposed of properly. So, inorganic mercury is not a very huge problem. We use inorganic mercury in fluorescent lights, batteries, etc. But organic mercury like methyl mercury, it is quite dangerous. It is used mostly in chemical industries. Now, even the inorganic mercury, if it is not disposed of properly, it has potential to enter into food chain and leading and it leads eventually to bioaccumulation and biomagnification. So, what happened in the Minamata Bay? What happened in the Minamata Bay is the entire bay was reclaimed and it was turned into an eco park, eco park of Minamata. But the struggle continued. I can, I can actually give an analogy of this Minamata disaster with the Bhopal gas tragedy in India in 1980s, 1984, if I'm not wrong. What happened was a very long journey for these victims, these victims of the 
the I would say illegal work carried out by the company Chiso Company, Chiso Company Limited. And even today, even after 40, 50 years of this occurring, people are still waiting for compensation. In fact, when the work or, or when, the, uh, when the entire case came out that Minamata disease is spreading in the Minamata Bay and it was attributed to the Chiso Limited Company, Chiso itself was a very big company in the, in the Minamata region. So some people were infected, some were not, some people got the disease, some people did not get the disease because they did not have too much of quantity of fish. So what happened? The people who got Minamata disease, they were discriminated because people were dependent on the Chiso company. The, the, the people who, were, who, were, who, are, who got the disease, they filed multiple suits against the company. While the people who are employed there, they started to discriminate against their own people. So, there was so much of, so much of euphoria, misinformation during that time. It, it was believed that a person getting Minamata disease, because it was, it was like a, a kind of a madness, because people got unconscious, they, uh, something impacting your central nervous system, you, you get the idea, right? So the other person would be fearful. They thought that they thought that it is contagious. They, they thought that it is even it can even be genetically transmitted to the next generation. But it was not true. Because of this, the community itself was divided. And later on, later on, when things smoothened out, because of the Minamata disease and the, because of the Minamata movement in the area. A concept came up called as Moai Naoshi. Now, this Moai Naoshi is a Japanese concept of joining the ship. Now, this was this was a campaign or a movement which was run to bring people together to fight against the Minamata disease together, to fight against the Chizo company together. So I hope you, you get you get the, the problem or the tragedy here that people, first of all, are suffering and the other people are discriminating against the people who are suffering double injustice. So, they came up with the concept of Moai Naoshi. I gave, I gave this concept just because sometimes a question might arise. What is this concept of Moai Naoshi or Moai boats? Now, this is a symbolic gesture of Minamata people uh, that they, they are together in this fight. All right. Now, this was about the Minamata disease. I hope you have gotten enough idea about Minamata convention or the Minamata problem itself. So, as I told you, Minamata Convention, it was finalized in 2013, it was adopted in 2013, later on in 2017, it was enforced after, after requisite ratifications. The first meeting took place in 2017, the second meeting took place, the Conference of Parties in 2018, the third one in 2019. The fourth one was supposed to happen in 2020, because, but because of COVID-19, it was delayed and it was held in two parts, once in 2021, later on in 2022. And this year, the fifth conference of parties was held in Geneva, Switzerland. And the parties who have signed, who have ratified Minamata Convention, they have certain aims. As I told you, mercury is used in many areas. Mercury is used in uh, battery production, fluorescent lamp production, relays, electronics, thermometers, sphygmo manometers, the dental fillings, dental amalgams, and other chemical production as well. So ultimately, the convention, it, it suggests that, yes, there are essential products and essential product use shall be regulated. But for the other products, we will be phasing them out slowly and steadily. So time has been provided to phase out the products. For instance, today we are moving towards the LED, the light emitting diodes. We have moved towards LEDs. So we will be getting rid or we will be phasing out the CFLs completely potentially in next few years. Yes, that's, that's the basic idea of convention. And now, in this fifth conference of parties, the first thing that has been suggested is CFL would be completely over by 2070. Globally, at the world level, CFLs would be completely phased out. So, CFL does not make sense as well, isn't it? Because they consume more electricity. So, we have gotten efficient lighting now. So let's move to LED. That's the idea, right? Although a stringent target of 2025 has also been suggested, but globally by 2027, CFL complete phase out. So you might not get CFL in market at all, right? Apart from that, some other big decisions have come up, especially amendment to annexes A and B. Now these annexes A and B, they talk about, annex A talks about mercury added products. There is a list of mercury based products 
which are going to be phased out. Many of these products, they have already been phased out by 2020 and the target which was there for some products, which has not been reached, it has been shifted to 2025. So most of the products, mercury based, based product, products, they would be phased out slowly and steadily by 2025. So NXB talks about manufacturing processes. Now in terms of manufacturing of chemicals like uh, sodium methylate, potassium methylate, which uses elemental mercury uh, as one of the uh, one of the ingredients or catalysts. So that would be uh, that would be regulated. Apart from that, whatever exports and import consignments are going to go between the parties. Remember, there are more than 120 parties. 128 countries are signatories to the convention, and out of these, more than 120 countries have submitted their national plans. That means. The compliance rate is more than 95%. India is also a signatory to it. So from now on, whatever import export consignments would come, there would be mercury waste threshold with it. And the mercury waste threshold would be 15 milligrams per kg. Apart from that, the parties have decided to create open-ended scientific group to study the impact of convention and to suggest improvements. Improvements? In, in next COP would be 2025 because from now on it would happen biennially 2025 then 2027. So 10 years of enforcement what, what has been done by the Minamata convention a study group a scientific group would be studying and giving recommendations. Apart from that the funding there was a second review of the global environment facility which gives funding to Minamata convention it has been highly appreciated large amount of funding will now go towards Minamata based projects as well. In fact, search one more thing, do a research for one more thing and let me know in the comment section. Global Environment Facility, it provides funding to projects under which conventions? It's a very important question connected to environment, MCQ can be created on that. So GEF, it provides funding to projects under which, which conventions? One of them is Minamata for sure. Apart from that, there was also negotiation among the parties, among the members that in the next COP, possibly there might be interlinking between the Minamata Convention and the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework, which was finalized recently. So we might look at interlinking of these two conventions because both of them are connected to biodiversity and again, Minamata is connected to health and environmental protection itself. So interlinking is possible in the next conference of parties. We'll be, we'll be keeping an eye on that for sure. But let me end my discussion with what is India's experience with Minamata Convention. As I told you, India is a signatory to Minamata Convention. It has also ratified Minamata Convention in 2018 itself. And many of the mercury products which have where the phase out deadline or the date is decided, India has asked for extension if you, if you look at what is the uh, progress with respect to uh, dental amalgams india uh, india is going to phase out phase out these apart from that uh, the earlier date of 2018 for acetyl dehyde production using mercury as a catalyst it was supposed to be phased out or ended by 2018 uh, but india has gotten an extension till 2023 along with it india has also asked for extension of the phasing out of CFL. Last year itself, India had suggested that it wants to phase out the CFLs, the fluorescent tube lights, which uses mercury completely by 2030. So India is committed to this. India has also submitted its national action plan and India is committed towards ending the problem of mercury poison. So if there is any update on this, if there is any update from India or from the Minamata Convention, conference of parties, we'll have a discussion again. But I hope that you found this discussion interesting. You have gotten enough information about Minamata Convention to solve any kind of MCQs which might appear regarding that. With that note, let me conclude this discussion. Thank you for watching this video. Jai Hind.